Hi folks, Harry Frank from Gray Machine here, and in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about making better bevels and shadows on your text. We'll talk about a couple different techniques here. One uses a bit of a extruded shadow that has a directional shadow, and then the other is a little bit more of a radial shadow that looks a little bit more 3D. I'm going to drop in some uh, text here that is pre-composed inside another comp. Well, I actually have two duplicates of that, so I can either drag it down twice or I can just duplicate it. But this is essentially just text with the After Effects text tool put inside a composition. This way I can have one place to edit my text, but two different layers here. One I can use for the beveled foreground, and then one will be the shadow in the background. In fact, I'm going to relabel this lower layer, the shadow layer. This first effect, like I said, is going to be using a vector blur. So let's go into our blur section and add CC vector blur. I'll go to the type and select direction fading. Now what this does is create essentially um, what we can call a mono directional blur. If you consider a standard motion blur to be bi-directional, so it goes in two directions at the same time, uh, and we can see this a little bit better if I turn the map softness all the way down, and maybe if I fill this with a darker color so you can actually see it a little better. So this is more of a standard directional blur, kind of like a motion blur. It goes in opposite directions away from the center of the source. If we set this to direction fading, this only goes in one direction away from the source. And we can change the angle control of this by changing the angle offset. Now, you can see that we've got a little bit of weirdness going on in here. Uh, and this is basically from the revolutions here. So let me turn this map softness back up to 15, which is its default. You can see it's kind of cycling through the process a few times. You can see that we've got these kind of layers that happen as it uh, starts from the source and then blurs outward. So if I soften this even more and turn the revolutions up, you can see more of these kind of rings around the source. So to make this kind of a clean looking shadow, we'll actually just set the revolutions here down to zero. And this will make for a clean edge when we overlay the, set, the text on top. That's mostly what we need to do. I'm going to turn this amount down to, let's say, about 30, because we're not making really long shadows here. We're just making slightly extruded shadows. And we'll change the angle offset, and we'll move it around so it's pointing down and to the right. And let's turn on our foreground text. I like to exaggerate this a bit by adding some levels control. So I'll go to color correction and add levels. And I don't think it really makes much difference in terms of what order I've got, if I fill this first or do the levels first, but uh, I'm going to do the levels first and then fill it with that gray. So in my levels, I'm going to make sure to select my alpha channel, and then we're going to crush the alpha channel a little bit to make those shadows a lot darker. So I'll bring the input white down. We can also adjust the gamma if you'd like it a little less faded and a little sharper. So you can fine tune it from there, salt and pepper to taste. Um, you can also use the output white to adjust the overall opacity without having to reach for your uh, opacity control down here because we're already controlling the alpha channel. So let's talk about bevels now. Now you probably know about the perspective bevel alpha control and this you know can work okay but it's a little played out and doesn't have a whole lot of control when i need to bevel my text usually what i do is reach for stylize and cc glass now by default looks a little weird so we need to tweak this quite a bit so let's go into all of our controls here we'll be tweaking all this stuff so we'll go to this displacement turn this way down we'll set this to about four now we can see that we've already got something pretty interesting going on here. Now I found my settings are pretty much locked around four, four, and four for softness, height, and displacement. You can get lots of different looks by playing with these, but what you end up with is a very subtle, but very noticeable effect that isn't just a sharp bevel. Now if you'd like to enhance the shading that's going on in here, we can turn down the diffuse just a little bit, not until it gets gray, but then you can turn up the specular here and you can see this as I move the light direction around like so. Let me zoom in on this to make sure everybody can see this. Now if you want to get tricky we can actually link the light direction to the shadow direction. So let's say I'm mostly going to be adjusting the light direction here so I'm going to go to my vector blur 
So I'll create an expression for the angle offset and then we'll pick whip the light direction. Now I've found that uh, we need to offset this by 180 degrees because those, they're not quite aligned. So now as I change the light direction and those uh, specular highlights change, we change the shadow as well. So that's one technique. So we're using CC glass for the beveling and some clever use of CC vector blur. And we've already kind of created a, a different look that is not just the standard drop shadow, not just the standard long shadow, but something a little bit more in between that I think is really interesting. Now that said, there's another technique that we can use, which is using a radial shadow. And this has been done before, but I figured it is worth covering because this also ties into using uh, CC glass. So let me open up a, a plain co uh, copy of this composition. So again, same old thing. We've got two different uh, copies of the same source, and I'll turn that top one off. So we're going to use another CC effect, and so we're going to go to Blur CC Radial Fast Blur. And we'll move this source point up just a little bit. I'm not going to mess with the amount that much, but what we have is sort of this zoom blur. And again, like I did before, I'm going to go to Generate, Fill, Fill this with a darker color. Oops, I don't want to invert that. just want a dark kind of color. So if I move this around, we get a little bit more of a... So if we use the CC glass that we did before, in fact, I'm just going to copy and paste these settings. What inspired me to jump to that radial blur is that CC glass allows you to not only use the effect light, but the After Effects lights. So let me set this to After Effects light, create a light in here, and we'll make a point light first point light right there. I'm not a fan of this plasticky looking gray, so I'm going to turn this diffuse all the way up to 100 to get rid of some of that darkness. But you notice that if I turn this ambient up and down, it's not doing anything. And the reason is, is we don't have any sort of ambient light. So I'm going to go in here. In fact, I'll name this ambient light, change the type to an ambient light, and I'm going to change the color a little bit because what I like to do with ambient lights is add just a little bit of uh, ambient color. Now, as I bring this up, you'll see that we start to introduce some of that color from the ambient light. And I want to keep this a little bit about halfway, not all the way up. Obviously, turning this all the way up will flood everything with color. So I'm going to bring this back down a little bit about halfway. I like just getting a little bit of that ambient color. It makes it feel a little bit more real. So at this point, it would be great if we could link the radial shadow to the point of that light, which is not too hard. We just need to do a little bit of an expression here. So what I need to do is take this point, which is a 2D point, and link it to the 3D light. And you've probably seen this done many times before. If you haven't, then just follow along and you'll want to just type it as I write it. So I'll go to this center parameter, hold down Option or Alt, and click on the stopwatch. So we'll be making a, an expression. And I want to get the light, not the ambient light, but the other point light that I've made, and pick whip just the name, not the position of it, but just the name. And we're going to type period, T-O, lowercase, capital C-O-M-P. So to comp, and then in parentheses, I will type a left bracket, 0, comma, 0, comma, 0, and a right bracket, and close that out with the end parentheses. So that expression is what we call a layer space transformation. There's lots of different ones in After Effects, but this particular one simply takes the 3D object and its equivalent 2D projection point in XY and uh, converts it to that. So what we're doing is converting to the equivalent XY position of the projected 3D point. So what we can do here is control the shadow as well as the lighting with our text. So there you have it, two different types of shadows, as well as some variation on creating nice looking bevels that don't use the standard bevel plugin in After Effects. I hope you enjoy and learned something. My name's Harry Frank. Thank you so much for watching.